Good afternoon, everyone. I'm the last speaker, so it'll be a. I'll try to keep it, uh, keep the energy up as much as I can. So my name is Harsha. I come from an organization called Fields of You. We are a nonprofit research group. We build games and simulations to make better public policy. So as part of our work, we continuously deal with complex systems. The difference, I guess, is that we are a little more hands-on. We work in the field, so we have to do the whole uh, uh, process completely, end to end. So this is some theory. Uh, so this is a theoretical for policy formulation cycle, although this has been critiqued to some extent. And uh, there are newer theories that is coming out. What we actually focus on is at the planning level. And uh, we actually build games and simulations to address these aspects. Now, this is just to give you an idea of what are the types of, uh, um, how does the cycle actually happen? Now, what I wanted to focus on in this talk today is to tell you about what sort of simulation models that we try to build and give you one example of something that we just completed in Chennai. So usually we work with cities, building models of cities. So the question I have, as you can see, that the arrows are in both directions. So the question is that which one are you actually trying to build? It's not as if that we want to go from one to the other, but in complex systems, it's very difficult for you to define the system. We don't know how, do you, how does the system looks like. Uh, in the morning, I asked you about the history of the system also, because when you're talking about economics and when we are talking about people being involved, the history becomes an issue. So this is something that we use a lot in our theoretical, or let's say in, in the way of uh, uh, like positioning our work in theory. Basically, what we are looking at is the kind of tools that we try to build. Uh, what are the tools? How do we select those? Now, depending on, uh, so one thing that I want to point out is in social sciences, you actually have a lot of intangible data you have qualitative data, apart from quantitative and your tangible data. One example for um, intangible data or qualitative in nature is like how safe do you feel when you're traveling on a bus? Um, how can you quantify that? So you either feel safe or you don't feel safe. You can say I feel safe at 5 o'clock in the morning, but I don't feel safe at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. All this information will come to you just as I told you. That, that, that is the way the data will be like. So you will have to figure out what is the context in which the data was collected. You will have to figure out what is the context in which the person I told you this information, and then build your models to that. So as part of that, what I wanted to point out is that the kind of tools we use, or what we ended up doing is we developed methodologies rather than building just saying that one type of simulation, one type of approach. For that, what we have done is that there is games. When I say games, we talk about serious games. Somebody said in the morning that there is going to be things like board games, tabletop exercises. So there are a number of such things that we have developed based on the context. So I will show you in the Chennai example how we went about doing that. And then we use your traditional agent-based models or cellular automata to sort of bring those in, but then also bring in the people along with it, because at the end of the day, the people have to understand what is the model telling them. Now, this part, I, I just included this slide because to point out that in India, we have um, what you call wicked problems. The management groups will probably use that term. Um, what we would call is nonlinear dynamical complex systems. But uh, basically what happens is by the time you are trying to implement your solution, the system changes itself. So you are not able to attack one solution to one system. Now, what we realized is in policy making, for India at least, because of the scale and the complexity, you need rapid, responsive, and um, relevant policies. So which is why the whole cycle. That is, you collect the data, you build your models, you have to go back to the people. You have to figure out whether your model worked. So it, the whole thing has to happen. Some of the problems from the morning, I think people have talked about some of the issues when it comes to modeling complex systems. One is the, the multi-scalar, multi-sectoral is quite straightforward. But what I wanted to talk about is 
The informal institutions is an important factor um, because informal institutions are built in response to, it's a response to a system that's already in place. For example, we conducted a small study of how garment factory workers in Bangalore use public buses by BMTC. We found that none of them use them. All of them use informal transports because it's still very expensive for them to use BMTC. Informal institutions play a major role. The problem with complex systems in social sciences is that that is very difficult to model. Then um, you have actors at various levels. The energy talk that you gave is exactly that. We were talking about the macro level at the energy systems, but then there are also micro level actors. Then, uh, which is why what happens is that when the complex system scales, you can't build it at one system, one level, you have to be able to translate it to higher orders. Then, of course, governance structure and dynamics between state and civil society is always an issue. Um, this, I'm sure all of you know about this, but it's just that um, I wanted to show the two approaches that happens. This is the more optimization, where you go from different problems to one level. Here, I think in the morning, uh, Professor was talking about generative simulation. So we actually use a more generative approach where we are able to generate different situations, what if scenarios, if you will. But then how do you arrive at the perfect what if scenario or the, the ones that you select? Those are coming in from the people themselves. That is, where, that is like the, let's say the secret sauce that we use. At the end of the day, the stakeholders have to be involved. Now, we have built multiple games. I can talk about this later, but since I have a 15 minute window, I'm going to give you one example of a simulation that we have built. But we have built multiple games in energy, in waste, in uh, looking at city systems, etc. Now, this project was looking at Chennai's water scenario. Uh, unfortunately, this ended just before the water report came out, or the Chennai started becoming one of the most water uh, deficit uh, cities in India. What we were looking at is looking at what is the water supply, sewage, and waste scenario for Chennai. Now, what we also wanted to do is that the idea of using a scenario-based approach for city planning is not new. It's been there for a while. The idea of using agent-based models or land use modeling is also not new. It's been there in theoretical level at, for a while. But bringing them to a practical level has been difficult. Also, mainly because the institutional structure is difficult to figure out. How do people work with each other? Now, to do that, what we thought of doing is, first, we figure out um, what is the sort of um, structure that we want to show to the policymaker. So we said that, OK, we will build a model. We will give you a simulation with which you can actually test out certain policies. Now, quantitative modeling is quite straightforward. You take all your data sets. Chennai has a, quite, an, quite a well-documented water system. So we managed to get some reports. We managed to get data for at the granularity of per day water levels from all the different water sources. We also got rainfall data from Chennai's water systems. We also got data about um, some land use, not all of it. Of course, it's a very uh, how do you say, it's a very delicate matter to ask them where is free land available in a city where land demand is high. So we got some of that data, we built some statistical models, we ran some uh, checks, we were able to do some amount of verification validation. Now this is a point that I want to stress because in complex social systems, verification validation is a difficult task. It takes a lot of time to finish that. Now. Uh, addition to the primary data, we use secondary stakeholder interview activity-based workshop. Here I want to stress the activity-based workshop because that is what we developed a bit. So the workshop is conducted in a structured form. It's not as if you are giving them a blank sheet, but then you, you sort of direct it towards their operational and administrative tasks, but then you also sort of try to focus more and more and more based on who you are talking to. Now, after you do that, you get a diagram like this. This is, represents all the different, let me see if I have an R. So this represents all the different organizations here, like public water, uh, public, uh, PWD, uh, Chennai, Greater Chennai Corporation, Tufusil, 
So each one represents a different Chennai body that interacts with each other either for administration, implementation, policy, coordination, research, and financial. Now that this is done, we implemented this as a layer on top of our agent-based model. So the idea is that you will have a standard land use waste model where every year you have a population increase, which is a I can make it an exponential one, logistic one, etc. A lot of them, when we went back and showed the model, we were told that, okay, we have to follow the one that the census uses, the population growth model. We said, that's also fine. <laughs> we can do that. So we modified, uh, I'm sure a lot of you know about repass. So we modified repass to work for us. And uh, we created a model in which each agency acts as an agent. We have even modeled each interaction. Let's say if you want to build a desalination plant, you have to go get a permission from revenue department for land. You have to go get permission from pollution control board, et cetera, et cetera. So there is enough modules for us to go into the granularity of the details. But what we wanted to check with this model was two things. One is basically give an option for you to see what Chennai's future is given that people enter the values in. Second, we also wanted to see what would happen when you ask the more difficult question, if I change the governance structure of Chennai. As I mentioned, you start conditions, et cetera, then you have a CA-based model. The CA-based model, unfortunately, is not up to a level that I am very happy with. That's because I don't get granular data from the city. Uh, I'm hoping to repeat this exercise in a different city where I have access to more um, on the ground data. But even otherwise, we can always aggregate to some extent, like at, at least what level, which is not bad for such models. Because anyway, we are not trying to predict and say this is where you have to build a well. What we are trying to say is what is the effect of building the well on our overall plan. Now, so this is how basically the model works in a broad way. I can go into the individual parameters. There are about 150 of them <laughs> that I have modeled, out of which about seven, maybe around 20 or 30 come from their own sort of land use plans, et cetera. So from that, we take that, we extend that, we add some more bits to it. Um, here, one example of a scenario that we wanted to demonstrate to the people. Now, what happened is that all this modeling is fine. But as I mentioned earlier, our criteria is that it has to go back to the people. End of the day, the chief secretary is, he should be able to use this tool to say this is what will happen. For that, we went back. We did two more workshops. We have actually built a separate uh, visual GUI system for this in such a way that each agency is able to create their own plans and then run the whole simulation across different other agencies' parameters as well. The problem is the lack of coordination. CMDS parameters are built in, which you won't be able to see, because that's another important point they wanted. We run the whole simulation across all the parameters and then give them options to say this is what it would look like. Now, this is one example of that, where we said, OK, you have two options. You can either invest in, uh, let's say, keep, keeping up your current capacity, clean up your pipes, add more people so that you get your current infrastructure up to scratch, or you build more infrastructure. You say, I'll build two more uh, desalination plant at the cost of 500 crores each, and add immediate uh, capacity. If you give something like that, you, you can ask the chief secretary, do you want a capital intensive, or do you want a operational type of a plan? That is understandable by them. End of the day, this is something we're still working on. Um, what we ended up doing is that these parameters are not related to each other, so we had to plot them on a parallel coordinate system. We gave them an option of saying that, okay, these are the five different parameters. You can, as long as you're within the minimum and maximum levels of these values, all of you can achieve your objectives. But, uh, and this is done for each agency. There's like a huge graph that is produced. I tried running the SIM from here, but the network doesn't allow me to connect to AWS. Um, but what we ended up doing was give them a region in which they can operate in and then negotiate. So this is the interaction that we are hoping that we can go back to Chennai and run it again. This just completed in uh, June. We just published a very initial paper on this. Um, we are doing a couple of more 
iterations of this, trying to do this for other cities as well. Um, as I mentioned, I just wanted to highlight these two issues in this forum because it's a, it's a, it's, it's a theoretical and sort of a heavy analytical approaches here. So we sort of see ourselves as in middle of using theory and practice. So this is one example of doing that. So thank you. Uh, break, break and questions. <laughs>